Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Hebrews. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who were sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary, by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in me in Psalm 16. We will read it by half verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refu refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all All my delight is upon the godly, godly that are in the land. Upon those who are noble, humble people. 
but those who run after other gods. There are libations of blood I will not offer. O oh Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my life. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your holy ones see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Christ. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings? Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another, all will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and, asked, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when this will be, and what will be the sign that all of these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Gospel of the Lord. Lord Speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So we finally approach the end of lectionary year B, and unfortunately we have to close the book of Mark for probably the next couple of years with a few exceptions here and there. And as often I like to do, I think it's important for us to revisit where we started way, way back in Advent of last year so that we can see if we've made progress towards our goals, so that we can see if we've learned anything new about our future. Way back in Advent too, if you were here, you might have recalled that I asked us to do an imaginary exercise together. This morning I'm going to ask that we do that same exercise again, and then I'm going to add a little bit more to it to give you a new scenario to think about. So I'm going to do that in just a moment, and I invite you to sit back, relax, close your eyes if you'd like, and just picture what I'm going to build for you through my words. The war is underway. Some radical Jews have revolted against Rome and Jerusalem is under siege. Reports are that conditions in the city are bad. People are divided. Some see God is raising up leaders to push the infidels from the Holy Land. Others urge submission to Rome as the path to peace and security. Everyone is anxious. Caught between resentment of the heavy-handed soldiers with fear of extremist rebels, the emperor died last year, and there is much unrest in Rome. And to make matters that much worse, the very general besieging the city has been crowned the new emperor. Tensions are high not only across the nation and amongst neighbors, for villages are mixed of Gentiles and Jews, but tensions are also high in families as they begin to fracture along ethnic lines. You 
are part of a small sect who refuses to fight on either side because you are a follower of a Galilean rabbi named Jesus who was crucified some 40 years ago. The the Roman loyalists, they suspect you of continuing the alleged insurrection of your founder. The rabbis are calling you heretics, and the zealot rebels are dismissing your founder as ineffective against the Roman oppression. Everything in the world is uncertain. It's in complete and utter disarray. You are still, however, intrigued by the claim that Jesus' crucifixion is a symbol of the good news for Israel and for Rome, but you begin to wonder to yourself, where do I go now? Where do I turn? What does my future hold? If Jesus really was the Son of God, how was His execution actually good news for us right here, right now? And just as you are about to give up hope, just as you are about to fall to your knees out of nowhere and off in the distance, you hear a man preaching the story. The very thing that you want to believe in and yet seems to be a threat of a memory to only a select few. This is the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord is coming. You hear the man proclaiming off in the distance. And in an instant, are given hope once again, given comfort even in the midst of a world that is literally crumbling and falling before your very eyes. You know that all will be well because you have just been reminded of the very thing you felt within your heart all along, that God is powerful enough to break into this world and to set things right, to restore proper order, to bring salvation for the world. Pause. Hold that thought in your mind. Here's the new scenario for you to think about. The world is upside down. A global pandemic is wreaking havoc. Political tensions are high not only nationwide, but in your own family. You can't seem to agree with anyone or come to a common understanding about anything. Even the simplest of political ideologies are problematic. To make things worse, the leadership of the nation, no matter who is in the Oval Office, is always under question. The response to the pandemic has seemed to have less grace and concern than maybe it should have had. You've lost loved ones, you've lost family members to this terrible sickness, and more are dying every day. You no longer know who to trust. You are part of a faith who refuses to align themselves with either political side because you are a follower of a Galilean rabbi named Jesus who was crucified nearly 2,000 years ago. The secular world that is ever increasing around you suspect you of believing in something that no longer exists, that is labeled as black magic. Your friends, your own friends, refuse to believe in a God that can love when so much terrible things are happening out there in the world. Everything is uncertain. The world around you is in complete and utter disarray. However, you are still intrigued by the claim that somehow Jesus' crucifixion is a symbol of good news for the world. And yet, because of how things look through the glass pane of your windows from that spot you've been held up in for the last 18 months, you begin to wonder to yourself, where do I turn now? What does my future hold? If Jesus really was the Son of God, how was His crucifixion, His execution, good news for us nearly 2,000 years later? Just as you're about to give up hope, just as you're about to drop to your knees, you decide to flip on the live stream of the Sunday service and you hear the voices of your faith community united as one proclaiming the story, the very thing that you want to believe and yet seems to be only a memory of the distant past, of a time that once was. This is the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Prepare the way of the Lord, you hear in the Gospel text. And better yet, You hear the voices of many coming together to sing your favorite hymn. Come thou fount of every blessing, in thy heart to seek thy grace. In an instant, you are once again given hope, given comfort, even in the midst of a world that is literally falling apart before your very eyes. 
you know that all will be well because you have just been reminded of the very thing that you felt within your heart this whole time. That somehow, some way, God is powerful enough to break into this world and to set things right, to restore proper order, bring salvation and healing to a hurting world. God still is powerful enough to do those things, my friend. God will continue to do those things today, tomorrow, and the years to come. Our Gospel lesson for this morning though not the proclamation of John the Baptist in the wilderness, should remind us of the very thing that John was proclaiming way back in Advent too when we began our journey into the Gospel of Mark, that God in the flesh has come into this world to set things right. and That one day God will come again to bring us to God's self, for that is the promise that God gives to God's children. God does not promise that buildings won't fall, that famines will not occur, that wars will not happen, that pandemics will not change the way of life as we know it, but God does promise to carry us through all of those things. Those of us who believe in that good news, we should be compelled to share that promise with others. We should be compelled to provoke others to love, as Hebrews reminds us this morning, because That's what this Gospel text is all about. If you continue reading on in chapter 13, you will hear that Jesus asked the disciples to proclaim. That's what the text is about. That's what the task of the disciple is and always will be, to proclaim. Just as John the Baptist proclaimed in the wilderness, just as the Gospel writers proclaimed through their words, just as the first disciples of Jesus proclaimed and were put to death for their very words we too must be the reminder of the good news that Jesus brings. Because without you, without me, without us united together to proclaim the hope of what we know to be true, how else can we share with others that peace that passes all understanding? How else can we share with others the hope of a better day yet to come? How else can we share with others the love that is due to all of God's children? Simple answer is that you cannot. If you ask me, that's selfish and unfair for a world that is in so desperate need of those things, of that very proclamation. There's an old gospel hymn that's not sung in our tradition all that often, but it's one that's helped to lift me and replenish my soul over the years of my life. It's called, Love Lifted Me. Chorus goes a bit like this, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. That's what Jesus does for us, my friend. That's what God does for us, lifts us up in love, though buildings might fall, though things around us might seemingly be crumbling and withering and fading away. God has the power to lift us up in love to help us rise again. Time and time again, God will do that for us. And if we truly believe in the power of that love, in the power of rising again, then we must tell others about it as well. As we prepare our hearts for Thanksgiving and then Christmas, get in the hustle bustle of the season and giving gifts. Think about this. To lift someone up in love is the greatest gift that any of us could ever give. Lift someone in love this week, my friends. Amen.
standing as you are able, let us proclaim together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus calls us to give up our lives for others, that we may have the faith to live as Jesus did. Let us pray for all in need, saying, send us your spirit, O Lord. O gracious God, you have given up your very self to save the world, that we may be empowered to give up ourselves for one another, we pray. You have made your people equal and free in the baptism of your son, that we may live joyfully in this new way, we pray. You call us to take up our cross and follow the way of Christ that we and all your whole church may serve one another and live in obedience to your word. We pray. You show to us all the poor and the needy, all the homeless and the hungry, that we may lighten the load by taking it upon ourselves, we pray. You give us enough that we may share with the needy, on this day, we pray for all our partners and friends in missions, especially for the Angel Tree, whom we are supporting with our Thanksgiving basket this month, that we and all institutions of relief may be insistent in the care for others, we pray. You give to us every perfect gift. On this day, we give you thanks for your gifts, especially for all visitors, for this parish family, for the altar flowers which are given by Ellen Thacker in thanksgiving for the life of Dr. Richard F. Clark, that we may always remember your abundant blessings, we pray. Amen. You show us how to care and love for those who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or any kind of trouble. On this day, we pray especially for the McCarley family, Renee Bowditch, Mary Jackson, Don Willis, Patsy Taylor, Bruce Fisher, Jerry Heil, Ryan Henry, that we may always knowing your healing power, we pray. You have surrounded us with the saints of every time and place. On this day, we pray for those who have gone before us, especially Faye Jenkins Harris that we may follow them as they follow Christ on the way to the cross. We pray. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us confess our sins against God and neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters, my brothers, my friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, Grace Church. Good morning. Hey, that was pretty good for the first time. Oh, you want to try again? Good morning, Grace Church. Good morning. There we go. A special welcome to any visitors that we have among us. Thank you for uh, visiting Grace and choosing to worship with us this morning. Uh, our vestry person of the day is Mr. Jerry Twig, who is in the pink shirt in the back, waving at all of you. Um, if you need anything, have any thoughts, concerns, or if you are one of our newcomers, let Jerry know and he'll write it down and hopefully get it to me. Uh, I trust Jerry to do that. So, um, a few other announcements. Uh, we will be participating in the Grace on Main market that's going on in a couple of weekends, and uh, part of our participation will be having a fair trade market right here in the parish hall. That means that Sunday we'll have to do church in, in the church um, instead of in here. But it also means that we need your help to make that happen. So uh, check Friday Grams for ways you can uh, sign up for all of the different things that are going on. I especially need help, uh, and I'm calling all youth on this, to help me with the bonfire and handing out cocoa and cookies from 11 to 1 on Saturday. So Griff, you're going to be there, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. So um, any youth can come and help, no matter the age. So anyway, check out Friday Gram for that. Uh, on the topic of youth, our middle school and high school youth groups are meeting tonight to play mini golf at Play Around Golf off of 17. Uh, all are welcome. Uh, if you have an RSVP, that's okay. Just show on up. Golf and pizza will be on me, so I hope to see you all there. Make sure to dress warm because it will be dark by that point, which I forgot all about, but uh, it'll be fun anyway, so come on out. A few other things to make note of, and all of these things are in Fridaygram as well, so if you forget something, just uh, look it up in Fridaygram or take a copy on your way out. Um, Angel Tree is kicking off. Um, the, the organization um, is a little bit behind. They were trying to get an app to help do angel tags this year, and that didn't work so well. So we're going back to the old-fashioned way of doing things, which means we need your help creating the tags starting next weekend. After this service, we'll be uh, sitting around maybe in the tables in the back writing those tags. We're not going to do it in between the services because we have a special guest speaker for formation hour, which we want to give all of our attention to. So um, if you have a few minutes after the service next Sunday, stick around and help us write those tags. Um, we'll, if it's not in the back there, it might be down at Riverview, but we'll let you know where it is. So um, please come help with that. A huge thank you to all of our volunteers who helped out with port this week. I believe we had 32 volunteers over the course of uh, the couple of days, and that included folks who prepared meals, did shopping, helped check in, sign out. It was um, 
uh, I'm told, is, was wonderful. I unfortunately couldn't make it, but thank you all from the bottom of my heart for doing that. That is one of the ways that we can proclaim that good news of God out there in the world. So thank you for that. Um, let's see here. Last but not least, I hope you've been paying attention to the stewardship corner in our Friday Gram, where we've been hearing from our own parishioners about uh, what it means for them to give to the church, and we've been hearing and reading some reflections from the Episcopal Network on stewardship. Um, just as a way of updating, I think we are about 60 or so promise cards in, and our goal is for 150 to come in this year. As a point of reference, I think we had around 142 last year, so I know we can do it. Um, thank you all in advance for your generosity and your promise to the Ministry of Grace this year. If you ever have questions about that, feel free to contact me. And now let's move on to our Thanksgiving basket. So any visitors that we have amongst us this morning, the Thanksgiving basket is one of the ministries of grace in which we give thanks for the things in our lives that God gives to us. And all proceeds from this goes directly back out into the community or some organization that we partner with. Um, we will have our general collection plate later, but this, this goes directly back out into the world. And this month we're supporting uh, that Angel Tree Ministry. Next month we will be supporting Free Kind, who gave the Adult Forum last weekend. So um, without further ado, I open the microphone up to, to the Thanksgivings. Remember the orange piece of tape is kind of the area you should stand. Otherwise, if you get too close to that microphone, the people online will be angry with you because it's very loud. So um, the mic is yours, my friends. Thank you. I'm just thankful for this beautiful fall. I grew up where by this time of the month you'd have plenty of snow. And I'm very thankful today that there is wonderful sunshine, and it's actually pretty warm out, and I'm going to be able to take a walk and do a few other things outside, so I'm just thankful that we've got the weather we've got today. It beats a lot of snow. <laughs> I give thanks for being here today with my sister, Seth Sandy. Yesterday was my 28th year anniversary, and I give thanks to my wife for putting up with me. Also, I want to invite all men to the men's breakfast on the 27th. I know it's after, I know it's during the holidays and you're probably full of turkey, but come out for the burnt sausage and the, and the fellowship. Good morning. I'm thankful for slow and steady progress in the Willis household healing. As always, I am thankful for your love and service to this place we call grace. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Just a word about communion. Um, for those who are visiting, we are able to share in the bread and the wine, but in order to do that, I have to dip it for you. So if you would prefer bread and wine, please hold your hands out like this. If you would just like bread, one arm across your shoulder. If you would prefer just a blessing, both arms across your shoulder. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling His death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, the holy things for the holy ones. This time I invite you to be seated until you come up to receive communion. And just a reminder for those who wish a laying on of hands or healing prayer, our prayer stations are at the back of the church.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, remember that life is short and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be quick to be kind, make haste to love. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Let us sing out, my friends. and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.